Good evening from Bangkok. Um, welcome to the 11th webinar organized by AIGS. So it is a pity that like last time we went through the collection problem. So many of you have missed the complete video of Dr. Peter Lickberg about the gem pegmatite. So after that, we made an appointment with uh, Dr. Peter Nickberg and uh, we record a full and complete video. Now it's on AIJ social media already. You can check that video if you are interested. So um, in order to compensate last time's uh, accident, so this time we invited two very important speakers from the industry and they are very well known in the digital color area. So the first speaker will be Mr. Malaham uh, Sevadamish, and he is uh, the, the CEO of Jamie Wizard, and he is a well known and a, a leading expert in the gem color analysis. Um, he also published a very famous book, uh, the Dealer's Book of Gems and Diamonds. So if you are interested, you may search for that. He also published a lot of articles you can check in James and Gemology and uh, Jula of Gemology. Since 2003, Mr. Melaham, he was engaged in the Jamie Wizard, the development of Jamie Wizard, and the system of uh, analyzing and the communication for the color. So uh, it's a very marvelous job for doing the digital color. And uh, now this system has been used by the major institutes around the world. And uh, the other speaker will be Mr. Baron Guy Bernstein. He is a chief, the, uh, chief academic officer of uh, Jimmy Wizard's uh, Jim Carla Academy. Uh, he's mainly responsible for the educational program. He also functions as a chief gemologist of the European Gem Center and the GW Lab chain of laboratories. So, there are, so and today I will give the stage to these two speakers from Gem Wizard. They are quite experienced in the webinar and the how to function the webinar because they also organize their, their own webinar. So if you are interested, you may also check in the YouTube channel of Gem Wizard. So now let's uh, welcome two speakers. I will give the stage to Mr. Guy Bernstein. Hello, Michelle, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. So now I will give the stage to you. So now it's your turn. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you very much, all of you that uh, joining us today. Also here with me is uh, Menachem. Menachem, uh, can you open your video and mic and say hello to the crowd? Good evening, people all around the world. Yes. So uh, before starting, I would like to uh, uh, thank AIGS and especially Michelle for inviting us uh, to give this uh, webinar here. Um, we just look at the list of uh, canons that you uh, invited before us and we feel privileged to be part of this uh, series. So. Uh, what we are going to uh, do today, we are going uh, to uh, explore a little bit about uh, gem commercial names and trends. When, when, when we are uh, saying gem commercial names, we mean all the trade names that were developed during years, pigeon blood, royal blue, cornflower blue, uh, vivid green, all of these things. And we uh, did a kind of a uh, world survey, very interesting one. Uh, around the world that uh, um, was uh, using a, a, a technology that called big data analysis in order to gather the information. And what we are going to do today is to show you the methodology that we used in order to collect this information and the amazing insights that we found that are considering eye-opening also for uh, uh, veterans in the industry. So before uh, deep diving, into uh, Jamie Wizard, into the technology, into the survey that we did, we need first of all to spot on a very uh, um, uh, crucial uh, issue that we have in the industry, which is the gem color communication issue. And the problem is that color communication of gems cannot be, a, we cannot communicate color of gems 
uh, via phone or printed materials in a way that on the first time, the second, the other side will understand exactly what we are talking about. It's just a, a problem that we cannot des describe color in a verbal words easily. And this causes us two uh, main problems. First of all, it's impossible to match uh, two stones when they are physically distanced from each other. So if I need now to create a pair of earrings and I need matching colors, I need to do it manually. I need to take those two gems together and uh, compare them and to see with my own eyes that they are uh, matching each other. And this manual work caused the second problem, which is a lot of efforts, a lot of valuable time, valuable money that is being uh, uh, spent just in order to create these pairs, these sets, in order uh, uh, to communicate the color easily. So in 2004, we, uh, uh, Jamie Wizard, developed a new way to communicate color, which is based on a digital color communication. Menachem here with me is the founder of uh, Jamie Wizard and also the inventor of the system. So uh, Menachem, would you like uh, to take the lead here and uh, explain a little bit about how this system was developed? Yes, I will be glad to do it. Um, okay, first of all, uh, what existed before the Jamie Wizard were a lot of systems that uh, uses plastics of all sorts of kinds, uh, systems, um, paper, uh, and also master stones. They were good systems, but you can't communicate those systems online, especially in this day and age where everything is online and you have to describe things. So we decided almost 20 years ago to create something digitally. We didn't know that the world is going to go that digital, but we, we decided to start doing it. What we did is we took uh, close to half a million uh, images of gemstones, real images, never mind what the shape was, and we created a, a, an, an analysis of that particular uh, colors that will create a 3D image by the computer, a simulation of that particular uh, image, but always in round. That means we turn all the shapes into round. This was in 3D. And then this 3D, the computer created a 2D images in all the shapes. Uh, round, oval, um, hearts, etc. And we ended up with having many, many thousands of what we call the rulers of uh, uh, colors, and we place them around the uh, color space, what we believe was the color space, in order to find precise uh, areas which we thought were important for color. So we created many, many thousands of spots around the color world. And then the GIA uh, people, it was in fact, Bill Boyajan spotted us in India uh, in the year 2003. Bill, thank you for it. You are probably in the audience. And uh, Bill, uh, which was, who was the uh, president of GIA, um, created a team within the GIA to work with us almost three years to fine tune the system according to what the GIA thought is the uh, colors. So in fact, what we did is digitization of the GIA system, which is amazing, but it was in plastics, etc. And we turned it into um, uh, digitization. We didn't know where it's going to take us, but we did. Very quickly, we realized, uh, especially with the demands of the GIA, that we need to analyze each one of these images uh, and create what we call the DNA. As you see here, the image on the left, the underneath it, you see the makeup of uh, the DNA, and then you see all the DNA of that image. This is the DNA of that particular image, what we call DNA. 
and this, there is an average uh, color, there is a dominant color, and secondary color. Now, this is unique only to this particular image. That means if I will meet this particular image anywhere else in the world, I'll be able to tell you this is the stone. Close after that, we realized very quickly that we can take this amazing information that we have about all these spaces in the internet, digitization, and we can analyze the images of stones. We don't know what they are that we meet on the internet, like what Google does with anything else. We can meet images, analyze them, and give it a Jemmy Wizard color. And we thought, you know, it's a good idea if you have an image of, uh, of, of something that you have on the net or have your own image and analyze it so you can have a record of the stone. Apart from you are able to uh, uh, analyze your uh, color in front of the screen, what GIA did in the beginning, you can also analyze it automatically, what we call using the analyzer that you see here uh, on the left. Coming up now, this is the uh, basic 31 colors that were chosen together with the GIA team to represent generally the areas where the colors are. They start from the red, go all around, blue, green, <coughs> and yellow, orange, etc. Now, you can take an image of uh, a gem. Now, you can pick up this stone by clicking on it and drag the color to the, uh, to the gem wizard colors. Bring it to the closest one that you think it is. Click on it. Yes, I think this is the one. And you'll find now the tone saturation grid. That means when you find the general color, the general hue, then you will get the tone saturation grid behind. Very quickly, we realized that uh, although we have the Jamie Wizard colors and it's digital, uh, we will have to find a way uh, to describe these Jamie Wizard colors into all the other scientific uh, languages like Moncel, C Lab, RGB, and CMYK. And we created what we called the, um, uh, some, the color converter. Can you click on the color converter guy? Okay, now you see here, any color that I click on will give you uh, the results in the colors in the Moncel, uh, RGB, uh, CMYK. If I click it here, it comes here. And also you can click at the uh, actual Moncel uh, numbers or RGB numbers and you change and you change the color and you find a precise color in Jebby Wizard. That means that when people started telling us, how did you create this thing? Who knows what these colors is? So what we did, we translated those colors, it took us a long time, into all the scientific languages. And we, start, we realized that we are gathering information like nobody else can. And then we started collecting on a vast scale information, which was to do with colors on the internet, colors with experts, and also data. Can you take it from that guy? Thank you, Menachem. Um, so uh, before I uh, uh, explain exactly what we did, uh, I would like to start by uh, defining what is exactly big data analysis. So big data analysis in a, in a sentence is a big data analysis uh, in a sentence is the process of collecting, organizing, and, uh, and analyzing large data volumes. And this allows us to reveal some things that you usually do not see if you are trying to look from the other side. If I need to compare between big data analysis and the creation of a database, we are actually talking about opposites. When you are building a database, you are starting by collecting individual uh, records and gather together, gather all of them together and creating the database. In big data analysis, we are going uh, vice versa. We are taking the database, trying to find some factors, disassemble it back to its uh, 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 individual records, and try to find some common ground between the records, which will uh, reveal for us hidden patterns or unfamiliar correlations, usually cannot, uh, which cannot be seen any, anywhere else. So 
what we did in order to create our uh, 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 database, we started by uh, collecting information from different areas. First of all, we took 20 million online gem records that we found on the net. Uh, and these were including all the information inside. We are talking about color, which was uh, uh, extracted from the uh, image using the technology of Jamie Wizard as Menachem demonstrated. And also all the other textual information, clarity, cut, geographical origin, treatments, commercial name that is associated with these colors and uh, the stone is being presented with it, etc. In addition, in order to make sure that we are covering the uh, world, the inventory in a, in a good way, we also collected offline thousands of gems that are accompanied by gemological reports that stating their information uh, and especially reports that are also showing commercial names inside. In addition, we also checked ourselves again, experts around the world interviewing dealers and also doing a, a, a small uh, scale surveys inside trade shows all around the, the world. And everything was also mapped against geographical location and against the time that the information was gathered. All of these together allowed us to locate and point on each one of the records that we uh, collected here to find its exact place in the color matrix together with its other information, all the color and contextual information that we uh, uh, collected over the time. And map the areas where these properties are commonly found. Just to give you numbers of how ma many uh, uh, gems we uh, used for our survey, we used over $4 billion of uh, uh, colorless diamonds offered for sale at several virtual exchanges all around the world. More than 400 million of colored diamonds also offered on the net and over $100 million uh, of colored stones. And this is only the online survey that we did. This is also supported by the offline ones. Now, what we exactly did, we took the big gem data, all the gems that we collected, the 20 million records, looked at each one of them automatically, of course, disassemble it to all its uh, record attributes, and then trying to find um, one, two, or sometimes even three uh, uh, attributes that are going together. For example, specific Jamie Wizard color that is offered with the name Pigeon Blood and is offered in Asia, and then compare it against Beck, all of this back against the big gem data to find more records like this and to understand exactly how many gems were uh, uh, supporting this uh, uh, combination. And this together allowed us to get some amazing insights about it. And the information that we uh, collected there was considered uh, amazing. Was considered, I, I think it's the first time ever that the big data analysis was done uh, in the gem and jewelry industry in such a way. Before that, the only analysis in, in a large scale that was uh, uh, carried out in, in this uh, uh, sector was usually on very fixated questions. What is the preferred engagement ring? Uh, what, were, what, is the, uh, what is your uh, uh, favorite stone, etc. We actually try to map exactly each gem and gem, each color, and understand exactly the perception about it. So before uh, uh, jumping into it, we will start with a kind of a world tour to understand what we found there. Uh, Menachem, would you like uh, uh, to uh, take us to this tour and uh, explain a little bit about different markets? Yes. Um, 
first of all, we did a world survey of general colors that are uh, being sought after today around the world. Um, let's start with the Far East, China, etc. We found that the general colors of ruby, sapphires, and emeralds, the regular, what everybody around the world know, are still very much in love there. And the, uh, there is a big demand for Paraiba uh, colors, etc. So uh, really, uh, China and the Far East uh, stick to the traditional uh, colors. While in Europe, although they uh, stick to the traditional colors of uh, red, blue, and green, of course, prefer the, the top colors, they still, uh, there is quite a big demand for uh, paler stones, uh, especially pink now. And this we found in the last few years, and we see it through our records uh, of analysis, that there is quite a lot of demand for paler stones. And uh, in, um, in the United States, to our amazement, there is quite a big demand for uh, peculiar colors like this teal, uh, teal uh, blue stone or this uh, um, a, a greenish yellow uh, earth stones, etc. So uh, we found that there is quite a big demand for uh, new colors, what we call, especially the new generation of uh, designers. Uh, they like the new colors. So uh, these are the gray colors, uh, et cetera. Uh, this is gener very general, uh, what I'm telling you now. Yes. Now, uh, we got from a, a major uh, uh, trading platform, probably the second biggest in the world, um, information about the age of the people that purchase certain colors that we analyzed. And uh, to our amazement, we found that the millennials, the young people, they prefer paler stones. That means uh, um, uh, they prefer the, the colors that are not too saturated. And when we uh, deep dive into that, we found that the, the um, uh, millennials, they uh, prefer the lighter stones because uh, too saturated stones look to them unreal or uh, too good to be true, or, uh, you know, don't look natural. They look uh, uh, synthetic or something like that. So the, generally, the younger generation, and this is really uh, on, a, on a vast scale, prefer paler colors. And we see it also in the colors of the designers today. The designers today, the young designers today, prefer lighter colors. When we start, uh, deep diving into individual stones, I'll give you just one sample here. We were all sure that uh, Tanzanite, the, the most demanded uh, color, is the violetish blue and it's the hottest selling one. But when we did analysis of all the stones that are shown on the internet and sold online, we found in fact that the bluish violet color, which is 24 in Jamie Wizard, is the hottest selling item much more uh, all, more than double sales of the uh, blue. Somehow, uh, uh, people, when they think about Tanzanite, they think about bluish violet and they don't think about pure blue or violetish blue uh, color. So, really, the perception of people here also helped. And the big data analysis that we did proved to us that this was the case. Now, we did a big uh, data research on the perception of people. Uh, of pigeon blood because this was very interesting to us and we started about 10 years ago uh, uh, finding what people think that pigeon blood is. We talked to people in Bangkok where I have a factory there but I spoke to dealers there, I spoke to dealers in Hong Kong, in Europe etc and also we got some information about uh, images that they sent us that they believe this is pigeon blood and we found that the Far East in fact is the most strict uh, um, about pigeon blood. You see here in the green border, the Far East is the most strict about the color of pigeon blood. Pigeon blood for the Far East is uh, highly saturated, pure, vivid red 
uh, pure stone. And while in Europe, as you see here, uh, they accept lighter stones, for example, in Germany and in Switzerland and in Holland, they will also accept these two uh, colors here as being uh, pigeon blood. Laboratories, on the other uh, end, they are a little bit wider. I'm not talking about all the laboratories, but some laboratories, the relationship between pigeon blood and their colors that they write on the certificate is um, vague, to say the least. So as you see here in front of you, Far East has got the strictest view of what, and we actually have proof to that in the big data, Europe allows more, and the uh, uh, laboratories, we see it through the, 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 uh, their certificates and also comparing it to the actual stones with certificates is much uh, uh, more lenient, as they say. And the same thing is with a, a slightly purplish red and orangey red, that in fact the Far East, uh, uh, Bangkok and Hong Kong and China is the strictest of what they call uh, and what they allow to be called still a pigeon blood. You see here in the green uh, zone here, these are very few uh, stones that can be still called pigeon blood. While in Europe, they will allow these lighter ones also to be called. And here they will allow this one to be called pigeon blood. And again, laboratories here, they uh, they decide that these colors are pigeon blood which pigeons i don't know but laboratories that's what they decide let's explore for example uh the color of ruby let's go to the value chart or oh, 10 carats let's say yes okay let's uh, you can click on the triple uh, a here and you see here the AAA colors of uh, rubies, 10 carats, etc. Unheated, you know, treatment none. No enhancement. Okay, calculate the price. The price here is, let me put my glasses. $94,000. So you know that a 10 carat stone, uh, uh, we, which has a very good color, is $94,000 a carat, which is AAA. The same thing that if we will have to have the uh, uh, pigeon blood color, which is uh, now here you see all the uh, possibilities of particular red, as you see here. If you point out at some, some, some of them, it will show you the color pigeon blood. For example, here, pigeon blood. Click on that and send this color here, send it to the price list. And now it changes into the pigeon blood color gem. Same way, change the weight because you, you change the thing. See no, that no, you it's, it's okay. The same way. Calculate the price now. You are talking here about $120,000. So there is, a, there is a rise of 30% just because you called it pigeon blood. Let's now go uh, to a better, uh, bigger surprise, uh, Rube Burma. So just because the stone is from Burma and it was called pigeon blood, there is a tremendous change of perception within the trade and they think about totally different numbers and we thought through the analysis that we did um, uh, as you see here colors appear let's take a very nice pigeon blood not this one the one underneath it yeah that's a great one the other one you remember was hundred and twenty two thousand dollar a card for a 10 card stone and let's now go to 10 card burma stone no treatment and a small surprise of $1 million a carat. And this is not a joke because eight carats and 10 carats were sold for 800,000 and a million dollar a carat. So this is something that 
uh, uh, people don't realize, and through the big gem data, we realize the big difference between the same color, if you call it Burma or not Burma, the same color, if you call it pigeon blood or not pigeon blood. Okay. Now, about cornflower blue, we were quite surprised because we found that a lot of people know what uh, cornflower blue, and, they, and a lot of them point at that particular color, which is accepted by most of the trade. It's got a special price also. We will not go into it now. And uh, you see here underneath it, you see the, what uh, uh, some uh, laboratories called uh, deep cornflower blue, which is a little bit of exaggeration, but we will allow them to do it. And also on the left, you see what they call cornflower blue, but not all the people will accept that. Most of them will accept only the one where the trade is. Uh, as you see here, the top color underneath it is what called the royal blue color. Uh, you know, just underneath it, this area here is royal blue. Now, how can you show these colors unless you have it digitally? You, you have to have a master for each one of the people you are talking to. And this is a digital master. Let's continue, Guy. Here, uh, also, most of the people will agree what is vivid green. Uh, and um, this is a very uh, vivid, uh, highly saturated green colors with not too much blue and not too much yellow. And uh, some of the uh, laboratories will add some of the darker uh, uh, colors like here and here. Yes. Now, uh, Santa Maria uh, in uh, Aquamarine is very much in demand. Most people know what Santa Maria colors are. Uh, the colors, the classic color of Aquamarine, a lot of people, they know them. The deeper colors, where does Santa Maria starts and where it ends? Uh, normally, it's not that dark as it's shown here uh, in, the, in, the, in the green area, but we have seen in Africa and for Madagascar stones, which are actually mid blue and not only just, uh, you know, sky blue, etc. Quite amazing. So also you can describe color when you use the system. And again, in this area here, the Santa Maria colors, of course, not always that deep, but certainly the darker, you can say, okay, this area is considered for me uh, Santa Maria. I will just add here, Menachem, that uh, um, there is a very uh, important factor in order to define the Santa Maria color, which is the dark tone. You are not always, uh, uh, not every gem that is highly saturated will get a Santa Maria color definition. Many of them will just get a gem quality definition, but in order to be um, um, like a, 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 this metallic, Santa Maria color, they must have also a tone, a medium tone that will add it into the color. Yes. And it has to be pure blue and not with a touch of green. Now, to, as I told you, to our amazement, all around the world, depends where you are, pigeons are different. I don't know how they check the blood of the pigeons, how many pigeons did they kill in order to check it. And you see even here in the middle, a Jewish pigeon here, each one of them decides the different color of pigeon blood. But Jamie Wizard can give some kind of a rule where we accept the pigeon blood. So in fact, different countries with pigeon bloods, if we want to create a common language, we have to decide on something that everyone will agree, and it must be digitization. OK. Uh, just uh, now to uh, sum up uh, what we uh, just demonstrated you. Uh, we can see uh, from the insight that we gathered that some of the perceptions that uh, people have on the trade are uh, sometimes uh, are uh, not correct, even if we are all sure it's, it's like that. We've seen it with the color of the tanzanite, where actually the violet is more in demand than the blue, although all of us are immediately thinking about being closer to sapphire. And we'll see it also with the commercial names that uh, most of the trade agree on the area where the colors can be found, uh, save uh, the uh, pigeon blood case where the forest is a little bit stricter. 
but we see that on the other hand, laboratory is trying to uh, satisfy the market needs for these commercial names and trying to expand a little bit the borders. But traders are still not accepting it and not pointing on it as a, as a, a valid colors for these. Thank you very much wanted, uh, for it. Uh, yes. Uh, I just wanted to add something that, uh, you know, Guy and I have been working in the last two years and I just started talking about it in the presentation now, but Guy, we were amazed the amount of gray people like today. In fact, we found so much gray within designs and within uh, offers of stone colors that 10 years ago, people would not even think that are in demand. Suddenly today, the grayer the stone, the better. So it's not only commercial name, gray has been commercialized and and suddenly if it's a grayish blue grayish green whatever all these colors teal color you know um, uh, ocean gray whatever suddenly are in demand and mainly in the millennial mainly the young people between 20 and 40 years yes we see we see a kind of a movement uh of uh, uh, this uh, this designer generation that are trying to be a little bit uh, bold or uh, border uh, uh, pioneers, that they are trying to uh, find the unique things and a little bit get uh, uh, far away from the traditional things. Uh, thank you very much for joining. And thank I think we can move uh, to the poll uh, now, Michelle. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Melham and Guy. I think uh, we can speak about uh, skip the polling and then we can go through the question and answer session because I think for this kind of like digital color, right? I think people maybe have a lot of like uh, questions concerning about this is a future trend actually for the digital color actually. So for me personally, I also have a lot of questions, but I'm so glad that you share with us about how you to use a data analysis to explore the color and uh, to find the interests, the favorites of the customer's uh, um, pursuits. So now uh, let's go through the question and answer first. So can you see the questions? One moment, let me just yes. open it. Uh, yeah, because um, I think before that, um, before we see the question, I have, um, let me ask a, uh, one question. So I have a question for the app, right? For this software, if I uh, use different uh, kind of uh, font, like I use it using, I'm using Huawei, uh, someone, is someone is using iPhone. So we take the photo of the gemstone. So the color will be different also, right? How can we try to skip this kind of uh, problems because of the photos of the fonts? Menachem, Menachem, uh, maybe, yeah. I will, uh, maybe I'll start and you will complete me. Yeah, yes, okay. This is okay, a question so, that we always get, by the way. Yes, this is the first question we every time get. So first of all, um, Yes, you have uh, your camera in your phone, uh, or even if you are working with a desktop computer, you can get uh, this image by email, etc. But the best image processor in the world, you also have it, it's your human eye. And uh, we believe that uh, if you will take 10 people and placing them against the same screen, they might uh, grade the color differently, slightly different from each other, because it's still subjective, although the same masters are in front of everyone. And we need to understand that the system has a, a resolution of nearly 7,000 colors. So it means that it's very easy to spot, not on the same color, but the one near it. But as long as you, the one that holding the gem in your hand, and comparing to the screen feels that what you are looking for in your hand is the, uh, 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 the closest to the one that you found uh, on the screen, it should be enough and okay, and the differences between the monitors will be negligible. Uh, I, I, want to, I just want to add on that. First of all, uh, no digital system is perfect. We, we, don't, uh, we didn't uh, pretend to be perfect, etc. Each screen on your computer, on your telephone, has got a little bit different. But it's certainly better than saying 
pinkish blue to somebody in China on the phone. And, you know, at least it gives you a very, very close uh, um, uh, description of what you send. A lot of people that, for example, uh, purchase the Jemmy uh, Wizard, the Jemmy Pro, big companies, they use it in order to saw their stones. And that means they have their screen and they monitor the screen and they uh, calibrate the screen. And we have some, uh, you know, uh, gems that uh, we help to monitor. And then they use it. Is it perfect? No. And as Guy and I uh, uh, said, uh, we should create a small chip, you know, to put in the brain of each one of us, and we will see exactly the same color. Uh, but the thing is that this chip is still not found, and uh, it's very, very difficult to uh, find the same color. We found that people in the morning don't see the same colors in the afternoon, even if it's the same people in front of the same screen. So it's a big thing, but Jamie Wizard gives it some kind of um, uh, standardization. Yes, some kind of harmonization. Yes, someone may choose this color, the other one near it, the other one near it, but still it's very, very close. Don't forget, if you choose the one near it is one out of 7,000 colors. And if you choose two near it, it's two out of 7,000. So you are very close to the real color. Is it perfect? No. But does it give you information on a vast scale? Yes. And we do grade in front of two screens in the laboratory. We have two screens that we check it. And we check. A lot of time we see three gemologists. We look at the stone, at uh, the uh, ruby, and we say, is it the number 155 or 154? We are not sure. Some of them say 154. Some of them will say one. But still, if you have, for example, a master of, of uh, stones that you have one stone that is uh, pigeon blood, and you say, OK, compare it to this pigeon blood. This is the color of pigeon blood. You know what you are talking about? You are comparing millions of colors to one color. At least with Jamie Wizard, you are, you are comparing a thousand color to this particular color, and you you can also explain it and send it. Menachem, Menachem, we have uh, uh, many uh, uh, other uh, questions, and I want to okay. get to all of them. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Menahem, for the answering. And before we go continue with the question and answer session, I would like to announce the next webinar. Uh, our next webinar will be with Damian Cody. We will talk about the OPPO, the 10 important factors for, of OPPO. So let me show you the poster. Yeah, so you will know what will be next time. Share screen. Yes, okay. Try. Yes. So our next topic will be uh, next uh, Thursday, same time. So it's about the OPPO classification and the eight more important, actually it's 10 important factors uh, on the OPPO. So we will see you next week. And uh, if you have any interest, you can register in AIGES Facebook, YouTube channel and website. And also our for Chinese attendees, you can register in the uh, WeChat and the Weibo. So now I'll give the floor to you for the question and answer session. I, I okay. saw a question oh. there about uh, how do we see the pictures, etc. What is the background, etc. You must understand that the the greatest uh, uh, results from Jamie Wizard are working in front of a screen. Yes, when we collect thousands and millions, in fact, of images, <coughs> sorry, over the net and analyze them, of course these images can be false or can be, uh, you know, manipulated by the people. But still, when, for example, when Google collects information on the internet, it doesn't, they don't know if it's real or not real, etc. We collect the images and we see the general world perception of the colors. Yes, you should have the um, daylight when you photograph the stone, it, it has to be, but the most important thing that you check the, your image of the stone near your stone and you know that this is the closest image. If you have that, then the Jamie Wizard will give you the closest result. Okay, uh, Menachem, I'm uh, running here a little bit about uh, two questions that the answer is very uh, easy and simple. 
The first one, uh, uh, how it was impossible, how it was possible to convert those scales with different referentials with three or four dimensions. It's very easy. All color languages around the world using uh, three or sometimes four uh, uh, dimensions. Also, Jamie Wizard works according to three dimensions, hue, tone, and saturation. And uh, also uh, uh, considering the fact that Jamie Wizard was uh, developed uh, from Mansell and CIE lab, it has very much in common. So it's very easy for us to create this algorithm that translate between them. Second, uh, uh, is it only related to gemstones or also work for diamonds? For diamonds, Gemma Wizard have a specific system with uh, uh, different rulers also uh, only, uh, only available by the same diamond. product. It's only available fancy, fancy color diamond, yes, not colorless diamond. Uh, the okay, diamond um, are much more, the diamond colors are much more sensitive and Gemma Wizard, uh, white diamonds, etc., white to yellow diamonds are not, Jamie Wizard is not sensitive enough to show you the precise color difference between H and I, et cetera. So we don't even pretend, but in Jamie, in fancy colors, we do have a system uh, that we, we use and we have a lot of diamond dealers using it, which shows you the color guy. You can show it if you want. Uh, it's very interesting, uh, you know. In a minute, just let me go uh, through the questions here. There is a uh, question that is being asked by two uh, different person um, about the uh, colors of uh, Paraiba. And if we did a survey between uh, uh, Paraiba, uh, what the trade considers as Paraiba color and what uh, is actually get, get, get uh, by uh, laboratories. In this case, I will share with you that we are currently working on such a research, mm -hmm. uh, especially on, not only on the uh, blue and green colors, which is uh, the more uh, classic one, but I'm talking also about unique colors, all the border ones. I'm talking about some mint green colors, unique colors that are still considered as Paraiba, and even purple colors and violet colors, which are manganese and copper uh, bearing, but uh, laboratories refuse to call it Paraiba, and the trade, some of the trade call it pink Paraiba. But still, it's still under research, so we didn't want to uh, share I it here. I think that uh, one of the most important thing about the colors of Paraiba is the glow. If a stone has got this amazing glow of the Paraiba, you, you know what I mean by saying glow. It's not just a bluish green stone or a greenish blue stone or a blue stone. It's the, this glow that is within the stone, which is probably the result of the copper and the manganese together, you can't compare it to anything else. That is why when we saw the first time, you remember a few months ago, this pink color Paraibas uh, from uh, Madagascar, we were amazed uh, uh, that the glow of these pink tourmalines with copper inside and, and manganese was completely different than other pinks. Can it be called Paraibas because it's pink? This is not my thing. I don't know if to, that it's allowed to be called, but in fact, it's the same uh, chemical results, chem, uh, gemological results in a pink color. But still to a perception of people in the world, Paraiba is blue and should be like that. Okay, the, um, next one is, uh, I got something here from Catherine Andrews that uh, asking us to contact her. We will contact you shortly. Uh, thank you very much for the compliments. Chandra Horn, hi Chandra, how are you ma'am? Um, um, with the price calculator, are you using asking or transaction prices and what market level do the prices represent, wholesale or retail? So the basic uh, uh, level that we are showing in the system is what we call the maximal wholesale asking price. This is the maximal price that the store will be willing to pay for a dealer. Now, of course, it changes a little bit between markets around the world. We are trying to create a kind of a golden path, a global average here. Also, the system has the option to add margins into the pricing to show retail prices or also deal dealer booth prices. Uh, let's not forget that we gather information uh, on a vast scale all the time. And we have what we call the zero point. That means who's reporting. If uh, one carat 
beautiful ruby cost um, $20,000 a carat at Tiffany's in New York. The same, precisely the same stone in a dealer uh, hands in uh, Bangkok uh, can be 8,000. And the same uh, stone in Burma can be uh, 6,000. So in fact, depends who's reporting. What, using this, what we call this uh, quite amazing system of uh, um, zero point, um algorithm we uh, check who's reporting and analyze those colors and create as guy said the highest uh, demand price wholesale now if it is in new york it's different than if it is in uh, europe it is it's different than if it is in india of course but there is some kind so you can decide where you are and you can always add minus 20%, minus 30% or whatever, wherever you want to put yourself. Uh, to, I want to buy it always 50% less than Jamie Wizard and sell it Jamie Wizard price, for example. And you, and you can ar arrange it with you within uh, uh, the calculator that we created for you. Okay, the next question. Uh, how you deal with the fact that color are graded through a picture and not from a real life. So first of all, Jamie Wizard, we recommend working with a real gem in front of the screen. This is the best way. But mm -hmm. if your uh, work is, uh, is done by remote, let's say one of your vendors is sending you an image to show it, this, then you can use it as an image. Of course, we cannot know if the stone was Photoshop uh, uh, touched or something like that. But therefore, our recommendation is to work with the stone in your hand against the screen. This is the best way. And if we, we want to be a little bit even more pedant, according to GI recommendation, this should be also done under uh, uh, 55,000 Kelvin, uh, 5,500 Kelvin uh, uh, fluorescent uh, bulb. Uh, not only that, uh, I just tell you that uh, some of the biggest companies that use us around the world uh, they, they have other users that we thought, for example, a lot of them uh, check the color of Jamie Wizard when they send the stones to uh, their customers to make sure that the stone that they get back is the same stone that they send. Because when you have a thousand workers, uh, unless the same worker gets the stone back, you don't know if it is the same stone. So they, they, they will write Jamie Wizard color, etc. Another thing that is very much now is that you commit for a certain Jamie Wizard color. That means that you say, okay, this is the color of this stone. And we have a lot of uh, dealers using it already. And they commit for a certain color. Now, they can manipulate the color of, of the stone. They can't manipulate the color of Jamie Wizard. That means the person will get the stone and say, hello, that this is not the color that you told me. Because he can check at Jamie Wizard uh, online or uh, in-house and, and say, hello, you, you told me it's color 155 and it is in fact 2943. Okay. Um, um, so the, second, the last one is not a question, it's more a statement from uh, Joki Wu. And thank you very much uh, from uh, the, um, the compliments. Thank you very much for that. Okay, Guy, I think that uh, if you, if, can you go to the fancy to show them the to fancy? To show the diamonds? Yes. Uh, I, will, I will need Michelle just to open it for me again. So wait a moment, I will open for you, yes. Okay, you can try again. Okay, so one moment. Okay, so I'm going now to the uh, color diamond mode. And let's select, for example, a color. Let's say I'm taking a yellow uh, diamond. Once I'm clicking on it, I'm getting a ruler that's representing all colors of uh, yellow diamonds, fancy yellow diamonds, from, from non-fancy light yellow through fancy light, fancy, fancy, intense, vivid, and the darker ones, fancy deep and fancy dark. And I can also add on it a secondary color. Let's say that we are talking here about a greenish yellow. 
So what I'm getting here is a kind of a color mixture or that's showing me the ratio between the colors, how much yellow and how much green was added into the stone and how it will look like for each one of the grades. And I can add also a third color, meaning a second moderator. Let's say I'm taking a grayish, greenish yellow, and it will show it again here. Now we can see that we have green, gray, but still the majority is yellow, and we do not have a, a light, fancy intense or fancy vivid. They are not available for these grades. I think, Guy, you can go into yes. the uh, fancy uh, rulers and you know, just show them yeah. generally. Uh, I can take it from there if you don't mind. Yes, I just uh, want to see if it's going up. One moment. Yes. Now, this is what we call the color carousel. And this includes uh, many, many uh, combinations of colors. In this case, you see uh, from grayish, greenish, yellow, greenish, yellow, etc., etc. Can you go to all the colors? You don't mind? Okay. This will show you now the basic colors of uh, uh, that we uh, chose together with the GIA. These are, you know, from yellow to to uh, greenish yellow to orange to gray to black to uh, brown. You see here, and then orange, pink, and pink. You see. Okay, and purple and blue, etc. Once I click on pink, for example. I will get, I will get the um, uh, color combination of anything to do with pink. You know, never mind the moderators. Uh, it can be brownish moderator. It can be uh, uh, other moderators. For example, the first line is pink, as you see here, starting from light, etc. This the second one on top is orangey pink. On top is orangey pink. You see, there is a touch of orange. The, the third line is brownish pink. Can you believe the changes between the brownish pink? Orange, for example, look at fancy intense, oh, brownish pink, fancy intense pink, and fancy intense orange pink. <coughs> totally different. So what we do here, and diamond dealers love it, we actually show then what is supposed to be the color? You can't, of course, analyze the color of a gem through that because diamonds are a little bit more difficult than gemstones. But here you see what you meant by saying it. And when we analyze it, we analyze it in the lab and we give it a color. So if you want to tell your people, uh, I'm going to, I have a brownish, fancy brownish pink color, you can show them approximately what you want. Can you click on the fancy brownish pink? guy can okay. yes yes one moment here it and is. then you can you can send it by email to your friend and say listen somebody is offering me uh, a stone fancy uh, orangey pink this is the color that it's going to happen is it good enough for you i'll look for one for you so you can actually send it by email also so the new world is not what you think you can't all the time sit in front of people show them a lot of time you have to talk digitally. And look what happened now in the corona time. Uh, Nobody is getting out. So really, this is a way of describing what we have. And we have a very good friend of ours that had a purple pink uh, three carat, beautiful, fancy, intense purple pink. And he said that the person didn't, uh, you can find here a purple pink. The person mm -hmm. said that he can't, I think it was purple pink or I don't know if it was violetish pink. And uh, the person said, no, he doesn't know what is, uh, uh, what to expect and he doesn't know. So this person contact us and say, can I send him, uh, you see the purple pink, can I send him, it was fancy intense purple pink and it was exactly this fancy intense purple pink that you see here on top. And what he did, he, no, this is fancy, fancy near it, fancy intense. Can you click on it? And what he did, he sent him by email, show the send email. He sent him by email the color because the person said, you can manipulate the color of your stone. He said, no, 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 this is not the color of my stone. I'm sending you a commitment 
by a system. So, oh, if this is the color I'm buying, and it was 90, 90 something thousand dollars, it was not a clean stone, but it was $90,000, which uh, we were very proud about that a person did uh, using our system. Because he said that the, this, this system gives the uh, consumers an extra assurance about the quality to get what you see is what you get, especially in gemstones. You know, very, very important to know to get what you see is what you get. That means if somebody is offered a ruby on the internet and there is a commitment of gem with a color, there is there a commitment of a color. This extra what you see is what you get, very important. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. For this, yeah, for this uh, answering session. So now can we go to next question? Because I think uh, we still have some questions to answer, right? Please do. Let's see if we have questions that were not answered. Yes, please, yeah. Yes, I see now here another one. One moment. Hi, I'm sorry I haven't understand the, the question. What is 55 recommended by GIA? I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't 55? know what they mean. Maybe they are meaning five by five, which is the way that we are uh, describing the color. And this is the same way GIA describing their color because it's the same system. Color one, and, color one, and, saturation five, tone five. That's yes. one, one five. five. five one five by five, yes. Yeah, but we say uh, vivid. We, we, we can also uh, use the verbal definitions of uh, GIA if it's. And uh, Jamie Wizard, of course. I don't know. Verbal red, uh, red uh, uh, moderately strong, uh, vivid, or, or something like that. Med medium tone, vivid tone. But usually yeah. we are co uh, more communicating uh, with numbers. No, but the numbers um, are translated to uh, names. Yes, yes, of course. Um, I am I missing something? So I think we answered everything. Yeah, so that's all the questions. So it's okay. I think um, this is all for tonight because uh, you already showed a lot for the system and how do you explore the develop the system, right? So I think this is the most inter interesting part because you guys really did a lot of work for doing the big data analysis. So it's really a great job for that. And also thank, thank you. you so much for the presentation and also for the for your patience for the question and the answer. So uh, now uh, we are going to close and I think this is at the end. So thanks again for your attending. And uh, so see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you bye -bye. very much, Michelle and the rest of AIGS for uh, allowing us uh, to give this uh, webinar. Thank you very much. We are thanking AIGS for allowing us to show our system. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. It's our pleasure. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.